A major Category 3 hurricane expected to make landfall tomorrow night in Florida, and some of our high-resolution computer models are showing it could inch closer to a Category 4. Hi, everybody. I'm meteorologist Chris Justice, uh, keeping you posted along the way as we track Idalia and the impacts to Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. If you don't already subscribe to my channel, I would urge you to please do so. I'm a no-nonsense weather forecaster. I'm going to shoot you straight. I'm going to prepare you, not scare you, and keep you informed along the way. All things severe weather, whether it be hurricanes, tornadoes, or later on this year, yes, even snowstorms. So Idalia right now uh, possibly undergoing some strengthening and maybe even rapidly intensifying later today. It's moving north at 8 miles per hour. Winds are at 65 miles per hour. I'm going to have another update later today when our computer models are processing. So this is going to be uh, kind of uh, a game we're going to play over the next two days. It's just those updates are going to be so crucial. And if you're in Florida watching right now, take these updates seriously folks. A Cat 3 bearing down 115 mile per hour winds. Then it moves toward Georgia. Then it moves toward the Carolinas. And the impact time frames Tuesday, tomorrow. Tomorrow you could be dealing with severe weather across Florida, central Florida, tornadoes possible. You'll be under the gun that right front quadrant oh so dangerous when it comes to severe concerns and for the Carolinas look out rides right up the coast I want to show you that wind speed forecast from our latest computer model in just a moment uh, technology folks it can save lives and we didn't have data this clear uh, even two three years ago our infrared satellite shows there are storms that are bubbling up all around it yesterday we had pink here and there but those are the taller storm clouds folks this is a potent potent storm. And what we're seeing here is probably an eye wall beginning to form. Uh, you've got some very strong storms bubbling up right there. And as I turn on the circulation, that's right there where we're seeing that eye. So uh, very likely we'll be able to see a visible eye wall very soon as this thing's probably going to take off today. I hate to say it, but uh, it looks to really be bombing out. It'll go from a tropical storm to a Cat 1 to a Cat 2 to a Cat 3, all in about 24 to 36 hours. It's generating some serious wind and waves right now. Latest check of the wave heights sitting somewhere 18 to 20 feet. Let's talk storm surge. Just got an update from the National Hurricane Center and they upped our storm surge expectations. Some areas here near Cedar Key, because we're talking about a major hurricane making landfall, could have storm surge values as high as 15 feet. Folks, inland flooding and storm surge, the most dangerous part. You, you can't do anything if your home has waves crashing in that are 15 feet higher than normal. Please, Cedar Key surrounding areas, evacuate. Get to inland areas. Go to Ocala. You know, it's going to be rough just about everywhere inland, but at least you're not dealing with the storm surge values. Let me show you what normal would look like. Okay, there's normal. Now let's plot the storm surge values again. That's underwater. Cedar Key is underwater right here. Down to Spring Hill, all right? Folks are asking about Tampa Bay, Sarasota. Certainly my eyes are peeled for you. Uh, you know, those storm surge values could be three, four feet. We'd have to watch it closely, but right now, uh, as we're dialed in on this, uh, based on the current forecast, you know, this is where the storm surge is going to be the worst. Uh, folks in Tampa, ask, ask Fort Myers, we've got to watch this. The stronger this storm gets today, the more it's going to want to lean to the right. Okay, and if it does, that could put Tampa in some more serious impacts as we go toward Tuesday night, Wednesday. And again, folks, this is tomorrow night. This is not two or three days away. This is tomorrow impacts beginning in Florida with some of the squalls rolling through. But it's tomorrow night that the worst of it's going to be approaching Florida and then making landfall very early Wednesday morning. Our computer models are in great agreement here. And for the Carolinas, we're watching it closely because there's a big group of the models here that are showing it may be staying just offshore. Certainly, tropical storm winds in Savannah and Charleston with this scenario, but that would put the tornado threat, at least the most potent severe threat, a couple hundred miles out to sea. It would also put the worst of the rain just along the coast and out to sea. All right, we have to watch that trend, okay, for the Carolinas, but uh, it's going to be rough either way you put it. Our global models are coming in. The European is a bit more out to sea for the Carolinas and beyond. Um, and then the two GFS and Canadian models are right there. Folks in Mexico Beach, uh, Panama City, Destin, I want you to be dialed into this, okay? 
you're you're still you're still close enough to this to where any shift would put you kind of in more direct impacts. Okay, so uh, please, your folks watching right now, Panama City Beach, please share this on your your uh, platforms. Okay, we need you to be dialed in and watching this closely. And and again, I'm going to keep you posted. I'm, I'm not doing one update here and then leaving you. I'm, I'm going to have another one midday, another one tonight, and then we may go to hourly updates tomorrow into Wednesday. All right, Tropical Stormy Dahlia, uh, GFS tracks. Look under the hood of the GFS. The operational sits around I-95. The uh, in the other models sitting right here uh, along the ensembles, you got 26 different runs of them, kind of split. But uh, the GFS is by far the most western track. The Euro lies right here with uh, keeping it out to sea. Almost all of its ensemble members keep it out to sea. And if this is the case, folks, this is going to blaze right through Florida, maybe touch South Georgia for a moment, then it's back out over water. It may very well stay a hurricane the entire way through. Uh, so South Georgia, Savannah, southbound. And this solution, uh, and by South Georgia, I mean Brunswick South, uh, could have the worst of the weather in this case, okay? Could likely still be a hurricane uh, in that case. So Jacksonville Beach, northbound through Brunswick. All right, here's what I wanted to show you, folks. This is the high-resolution model. This model has been consistent. I mean, it's maybe jogged 5, 10 miles. It, it has been just dialed in on this storm from the beginning. This is a model that's exclusive to WIFF4. We, we, we have it in-house, uh, and it kind of shows us the way things could pan out here. Major hurricane uh, developing by tomorrow probably a cat three at this point. This model shows it's continuing to strengthen as it approaches Cedar Key. And this is this is verging cat four in strength, folks. Uh, just dangerous. Ocala, Gainesville, Cross City, Cedar Key, uh, I-75 westbound, Eustis even. I mean, you're, you're talking about winds 60, 70 miles per hour inland. 100 miles per hour at the coast. I've got a wind model, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. This exact same model, but wind. But look at that high wall, folks. Just, just take it in for a second. I mean, just so dangerous. Uh, you know, my prayers are, are, you know, consistently with you right now uh, in Florida. And, and please, please take this seriously. Don't put first responders in harm way. If you're right there along the coast, it's time to, to, to get out, okay? It, it past time, in my opinion, because you've got this thing bearing down tomorrow night. Even though it's making landfall uh, Wednesday morning, it's tomorrow night that those uh, impacts are approaching. And here you are, that eye wall means business. And then it races toward the north. Wednesday is the time frame that the Carolinas and Georgia are getting heavy rainfall, some wind wrapping around here. Some of that gets into the western Carolinas. A lot of it's Columbia southbound, talking several inches of rain. Hilton Head, Savannah, Brunswick, Charleston, Myrtle Beach, really heavy rainfall in a short period of time, probably four to eight inches in 24 to 48 hours. Folks, that's a lot of rain in a short period of time. And it's going to be breezy in the Carolinas, but the impact day is for sure Wednesday. Wednesday night by 9, 10 o'clock, it's pulling away and uh, you wake up Thursday to a northerly wind and comfortable temperatures. Let's look at the wind speed, folks. I want to show you this eye wall, take shape later today, and then look at this. Uh, that darker gray right in there, that's that's 120 mile per hour winds. All right. Here we are. And now you got 120 mile per hour winds on all sides of this. You know, folks, to see it on this side, the front white quadrant would be one thing. But look at this. This thing's a chainsaw. I mean, it is just, it is a, this model is showing it being a absolute monster. Whew. All right. Wednesday morning, 5 30, 6 a.m., 100 mile per hour winds at landfall. Look at this, 122 for Cross City, Cedar Key, 104. Then it moves inland. Did it just flare up a little bit? Let's see. Let's see if I can back it up. Is it going to get mad at me? Let's see here. So frame by frame, 108, 91, 67. All right, so it's going down right there, and then it goes toward Waycross. Okay, and this probably would hold on to hurricane strength. If it's inland like that, maybe tropical storm. So here it is approaching Savannah and Hilton Head, 55 to 60 mile per hour winds. And again, Wednesday, 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 Wednesday is the time frame. So schools are going to have to be concerned about this for school buses in South Georgia. For the Western Carolinas, I don't have those concerns. It's going to be breezy. It's going to be maybe somewhat rainy on Wednesday, but most of this action is to our south. 
uh, Hilton Head, Charleston. We're talking 40, 50, 60 mile per hour winds. And here we are, Myrtle Beach, 50, 60 mile an hour winds. And then Lumberton, Wilmington, Wednesday evening, things are getting much better. Rainfall totals. Uh, you know, we're going to get some rain today, two, three inches of rain in the upstate because of the front. But look at this model. It's showing two, three, four, maybe even 10 inches of rain in some areas. That would cause flooding along the I-95 corridor with this latest solution. Uh, so rain, inland flooding, certainly a big problem. Locally in the Western Carolinas, we got rain from a stalled front uh, that's actually helping steer Idalia. Uh, the Tuesday, more rain. You're likely waking up to some of those heavier downpours, and it just continues to rain. But here's Wednesday. This is when the system's actually bearing down. We've got some rain wrapping around Wednesday afternoon and evening, then it's gone. You know, Waking up Thursday morning to beautiful conditions across the area. Wind gusts locally in the Western Carolinas inch up close to 30 miles per hour, and then they start to, to get better going into the overnight hours as conditions begin to improve. So folks, my commitment to you, again, is to be transparent in my forecasting. I'm going to have more updates, constant updates on the WIFF4 mobile app. I'm going to have you posted on air. Of course, Perella will have you covered on the morning side of things. I'll have you covered in the afternoon. And uh, right here on this YouTube channel, if you don't already subscribe, I would urge you to please do so. Uh, we'll, we'll switch to hourly updates at some point uh, just to keep you informed along the way. Again, wherever you're at, my commitment, my philosophy when it comes to severe weather is to keep you informed, to uh, you know, prepare you, not to scare you. And in this case, uh, I believe that it can save lives because uh, the more heads up that you have, the more transparent my forecasting can be. Uh, the more that you can uh, be able to make decisions for your family to keep you safe. So I'll have another update later today, folks. Until then, get to prepping, get to preparing wherever you're at in the Carolinas, Georgia, and especially Florida.